Hey guys, Hamster Wheel here, and today I want to talk about Apollo 3. Now, as you might know, I've been playing there casually and leveling up a few tunes, and as of right now, I have give or take 70 hours into the server. I got a max level retribution paladin with some heroic and PvP gear, a level 40 boomkin alt, and also a level 34 elemental shaman alt. So, I think I've played this a decent amount to give you guys a good impression of the server. So, what is Apollo 3? Well, it is a Cataclysm server that launched about a month ago. It offers slightly higher rates with 3 times experience. You can't buy gear here and not to mention this is the third server the Apollo team has launched. So, given that it's not their first, I can already look back at their previous servers and expect the same quality here. And well, I was pretty impressed with the quality on their other realms, so I was curious to see if they managed to pull it off here as well. So let's start off with the leveling. Now initially there were a lot of people leveling here and the zones were completely packed with players, which was very nice to see. These days however, the zones are a lot more barren and when I level on one of my alts, it's rare that I bump into other players while out in the world. Though, since it's Cataclysm, it's not that weird, because in this expansion, most of the people that are leveling are just inside dungeons. And even one month later after the launch, finding a dungeon, even as a DPS, isn't too hard while you're out there leveling. I queued up as nothing but a DPS when I was leveling my Retribution Paladin, and still managed to find a group in just a few minutes. Which is good, as Baron servers usually mean it takes you ages to find a group. So to put it this way, it seems that after a month, there's still plenty of people leveling on the server, which is nice. Speaking of the leveling content, all seems in order here. Dialogue and scripts are on point, and overall the questing experience here is pretty smooth. Occasionally there was some visual bug or a mod which pathfinding was a bit weird, but overall I enjoyed my time leveling up here. And since Apollo 3 has 3 times leveling rate, the leveling went pretty swiftly and it took me about 30 hours playtime to get my paladin from level 1 all the way to max level. Though again, I leveled as retribution, so if you would just go prod and spam dungeons as a tank, I'm sure you can do it even faster than I did. And on my other alts, I'm having quite a good time as well, though admittedly the questing content, while working great, is too easy in my opinion. Mobs die without breaking a sweat, and nothing offers a real challenge, which does make it a bit mundane, which is also why I'm very happy with the 3x experience rate. But then again, the easy leveling content is more of a problem that comes with the expansion, and you can't blame the Apollo team for this too much, as it is the Blizz-like way, so to say. And despite that, well, I can still have a blast here as an altaholic. Like I said, I already got a paladin to max level, and I like occasionally jumping on either my Boomkin or my Elemental Shaman and just get a few levels out of the way. Now one thing that I'm still noticing is the pretty frequent server restarts for quick fixes or maintenance, which is a little odd since I experienced almost none of this when I was playing on Apollo 1 or Apollo 2. And unfortunately, random disconnects are still a thing here even after a month. It has gotten a lot better though, as in the beginning they were very frequent and caused a lot of headaches for the players. But they are still here, which is a little worrying, and I can't give them too much praise for the server's stability as of right now. It's still not that great, and it really needs to be better in my humble opinion. So when it comes to endgame dungeons, it's a very mixed bag. Now in terms of scripting, they seem to work pretty good. So far I think I've done all of them, and they worked great with their different mechanics, cutscenes and whatnot. However, the biggest problem with the dungeons are the players. Yes, I honestly did not really have that great of a time in a good amount of dungeons, and that's mostly because people just leave without saying a word. And I don't mean that they leave after wiping the group, they leave right at the beginning of the dungeon without saying anything, which leads to a lot of frustration to the other players. And you can't blame them. You sit 10 minutes in the queue, and when it finally pops, your tank leaves without even having pulled one mob yet, you can't find a new one, so you disband, and now you gotta wait another 15 minutes before you can even queue again, which means you just wasted give or take 30 minutes of your time for absolutely nothing. And I don't know why, but it happens way too often here, which means that I can't really say a whole lot of good things about the community. Now, don't get me wrong, there are also a good amount of nice people playing here, but my experience in dungeons just hasn't been that great, and to be honest with you, it has demotivated me a bit to continue spamming dungeons for more gear and reputation. And looking back, I don't think I've had even nearly this much trouble in either Apollo 1 or 2. So I don't know if I was just lucky on those private servers, or that the community on their third Cataclysm server is just worse than the previous two. 
So, if I were you, I would just look for a PvE guild and try to form some groups with a few guildies to ensure some smooth runs where people don't just leave in a second and waste a whole bunch of your time. It's a shame because on the other Apollo servers, I thought the community was a lot better, but maybe it's because of the freshaholics that jumped on the server that have little or no patience to really stick with a dungeon group. Or again, maybe I'm just unlucky, so let me know how you have experienced endgame dungeons on this server, because I'm really curious if it's maybe just me. Another problem that Apollo 3 has is the faction imbalance. Right now it's sitting at 70% Horde and 30% Alliance, which is definitely not that great. And unfortunately there has been little done to counter this. Normally I would expect some perks for the opposite faction, but as far as I could work out there are none. And if I'm wrong please correct me in the comment section. This initially led to some very unbalanced queue time for both the Horde and the Alliance, where the Horde had to wait way longer for BG queues to finally pop. Now in fairness to the Apollo team, they did counter this by making Battlegrounds cross faction, so when you're a Horde, you now have a chance of facing fellow Horde players, which is exactly what happened in the few BGs that I played. And well, it worked quite well to rebalance the queue times, and nowadays finding a BG only takes me a few minutes until I'm ready to rock, so that's definitely good. So then, what do I think of the server? Well, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I haven't really been that impressed. I actually had a greater time on Apollo 1, and when I was there checking out the launch of Apollo 2, the server was more stable and the community there just felt a lot better. I understand that the occasional jerk leaving your group without saying a word at the beginning of your dungeon is part of the course, but in my humble opinion, it just happens too often. That and the server stability could definitely be a bit better with those random crashes that remind me of private servers from 2014. Though Apollo 3 does have a lot of good things too. The content is scripted quite well and one big driving factor is that this is currently the only fresh Cataclysm realm with a lot of people playing on it. Now I don't know exactly how many people are playing here because the website only shows the faction balance, not the amount of people online and Slash who, like many other servers, shows just 49 people online, so there's no real way to tell. But judging by how fast Battlegrounds pop, how decently fast the RDF queue is, and just taking a look at Orgrimmar, you can see there's definitely a good amount of people playing here. If I had to make a guess, I'd say at least 1500 people, though again, it's just a guess and nothing else. And you know what, I understand that to a lot of people a fresh Cataclysm server with a good population matters a lot. As a lot of people just don't like joining a server where all the content is already out and there's more fun in being part of that progression and seeing your own gear get better and better as you go through the content. So despite all of its flaws, I can still recommend the server if you're someone who's looking for a fresh Cataclysm server. Just be aware that this one has some flaws in it, and I definitely think there's still some room for improvement. And that's gonna do it for now. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Wheel, and have a good one.